You're watching this video because you're considering starting collagen supplements and you want to know whether or not it's worth it. And by the end of this video, you'll get my honest answer. Now, initially I started writing this video as a five ways to boost your collagen. And the first thing I looked into was collagen supplements. And I ended up in a huge black hole of research about this topic. And that's when I was like, holy shit, there is a lot to say about this. And I really wanted to do it justice. I decided to make a whole video just about collagen supplements so you can get the truth about what the science actually says. And stay tuned till the end of this video to find out whether or not I actually recommend taking collagen supplements. I feel like collagen supplements and supplements in general became really popular in the last few years with Kim Kardashian and every other influencer taking all these fancy teas and diet pills and all this stuff. And I really thought it was a bit of a fad initially. And then I've done lots and lots of research to find out that actually there is a lot more going on there. So let's explore how these supplements work and if those people are just being paid a lot to talk about it. What is collagen and what does it do? Now collagen is like this scaffolding in our skin. It's what gives it structure, firmness and elasticity. It's a protein that's made into fibers and it's made up of these tiny little building blocks called amino acids. Now small groups and small chains of these amino acids are called peptides and multiple peptides make up this protein. You'll hear me mention the word peptides a lot. Now there are loads of different types of proteins in our body, but collagen is actually the most abundant. Now these collagen fibers live deep in our skin's dermis and they help make up bones and joints as well. Now collagen is made by these fibroblast cells which also live in the skin's dermis. These are specialized cells that are responsible for making this collagen. Now as we age, our skin's natural collagen production does go down. We also start experiencing the breakdown of the existing collagen that we do have. This leads to these visible signs of aging which is that loss of elasticity, fine lines and wrinkles. But collagen also has other functions like it's very important for wound healing as well. And there are definitely things like sun exposure, smoking and poor diet that can exacerbate this as well. Obviously these changes are completely normal and natural. Please don't see aging as a problem. But we live in a society that's chasing this young anti-aging kind of image and it is really important to acknowledge the things that are out there. I am by no means saying that you need to do this to look young but if this is something that you're thinking of doing, please just make sure that you get the correct information. Now, how does this actually work? So collagen supplements come in a number of different forms. Sometimes they're liquids, powder, or capsules. That's what I've got right here. They typically come from animal sources like bovine or marine collagen, but nowadays they are creating some more vegan or vegetarian friendly collagen. And it's all kind of marketed as anti-aging supplements for the skin. Now, typically these products use something called hydrolyzed collagen. This basically means that the collagen molecules have gone through an enzyme process called hydrolysis and that will help it increase its availability and its absorption in the gut. It makes it break down into specific dye and tripeptides. This is what helps it go into the gut and into the bloodstream and eventually come to the skin. Now these pieces are called peptides and they actually signal to those fibroblast cells, those collagen producing cells, to increase their collagen production. Now in theory, this all sounds amazing, so why wouldn't everyone take collagen? But let's actually look at some data to see if it actually works. Now for a long time, collagen supplementation was a bit of a controversial topic in science and dermatology. The old data used to look at those whole collagen molecules and actually find that our gut couldn't absorb them because the molecules were too big. However, that's somewhat outdated because like I said earlier, all of the newer products are using hydrolyzed collagen. So it makes the molecules much, much smaller into those dye and tripeptides so that it actually can be absorbed. So if you are gonna take collagen supplements, make sure it's the hydrolyzed version so you're not just pooing out all of the collagen. Now the newer data is based on these hydrolyzed collagen which makes it much more applicable to what is available on the shelves today. So there are actually quite a few trials that have showed positive results with collagen supplements. Here are a few that have been summarized in this table but actually there are so many more out there. These trials have shown improvements in skin's elasticity, a decrease in wrinkles and increasing hydration levels. And these hydration benefits are really important because as we get older, our skin does get drier. For example, around menopause, we get a reduction of our estrogen, which actually causes a decrease in oil production, making your skin drier. Now, a good thing to mention here is that actually anyone who was taking these collagen supplements in these trials didn't experience any side effects. There were no change in bowel habits, no nausea and vomiting associated with taking the collagen. Now, like I said, this all sounds amazing and dandy and we should all take collagen supplements because clearly they work, right? 
But here are a couple of concerns that I kind of want to raise from looking at all this data. Now, almost all these studies were conducted on women between 35 and 65. And that means that actually outside of this age group, we don't really know what the collagen supplements do. They might be entirely useless if you're below the age of 35. And actually your skin has enough collagen that it doesn't work, it doesn't do anything. So if you're 20 and trying to look younger, what, like 12, then don't waste your time, move on to something else. These are a lot of relatively small studies that's showing good benefits, but actually we do need bigger studies with bigger, wider demographics to see what actually happens. Almost every single critical analysis of these papers felt that more data and more research needs to happen before we can be absolutely certain that it works. The other thing I want to raise is that not all collagen supplements are the same. Each of the supplements on the shelves in the supermarket actually take a different chunk of these peptides, a different chunk of these amino acid chains to stimulate that collagen production and signal to those fibroblasts. But actually, if they're all different, how do we know what works? In theory, it makes it very difficult to predict the actual outcomes. Now, you'll notice here that the actual dosage of all of these trials is completely different. So again, we don't know what the general consensus about how much collagen you need to get these effects are because the dosing is different in every trial. It means that it could be really hard to recreate these results for the average consumer. I also mentioned that most collagen supplements that you'll buy actually have other supplements in them. For example, vitamin C, vitamin E, and these could actually be the things that are responsible for changing your skin, not necessarily the collagen itself. So it makes it all, again, really hard to decide whether or not it's the collagen that's doing this for you. I'll also mention that some of these studies have actually been conducted by the supplement producing companies, which means we have to take it with a pinch of salt because it could be biased. And I just want to say, if you're liking this video talking about skin science, please hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know in the comments because it really does help. It helps me create the best kind of content for you. Now, I quickly want to mention topical collagen. So collagen that's in skincare serums and moisturizers. A lot of brands still make these products with collagen in them. But I just wanted to say everything I've researched has basically said that whole collagen molecules in your skincare will not penetrate your skin barrier. The molecules are too big to actually go through to the dermis and deposit and actually build your collagen fibers. Instead, there's actually a lot of evidence that supports using peptides, which is those little chunks of amino acids, the little chunks of the collagen fibers that then signal to your skin cells to actually produce more collagen rather than using the big collagen molecules itself. Those peptides are small enough that they can actually sit on the skin and send those signals down to those cells to actually make those collagen fibers. Now for my final verdict on whether or not you should take collagen supplements. Look, the truth is, if you can afford it and you have the time to integrate this into your routine, there is no harm in taking these collagen supplements, especially if you're in that age bracket. But there are definitely other supplements that have a bigger library of evidence to support their use. So for example, I take zinc, it's been proven to help with my acne. There'll be more on that later on my channel. So if you have to choose, you might wanna pick a supplement that is specific for your skincare concern. The current data does support these improvements in elasticity, skin firmness, a decrease in wrinkles, but there really still isn't enough big trials for us to completely support it 100%. Now, that doesn't mean these trials won't be happening right now and won't come out soon, so it's always important to keep up to date with the research. Now, there are a couple of reasons where I'd say that there is no point taking it. There's no point taking it if you're not gonna be committed. All of these trials and studies asked their patients to take the collagen for at least eight weeks, sometimes longer. They felt like the results lasted for an extra 30 days after stopping the supplements. Now that's not very long. If you're gonna do this, you want to be committed so that you can get the long-term result. There's no point taking it if you're expecting big visible changes. Now, a lot of these studies use different tools to assess people's hydration, elasticity, and structure of their skin. Actually, although the results show all of these improvements, we can't tell if this was something that you actually notice every time you look in the mirror. If you're expecting big, quick improvements, this is not something for you. Instead, this will give you maybe long-term sustained results and actually have preventative results that you won't be able to tell. If you have really high expectations and you want instant changes, you might need to go down the injectables route instead. All I wanna say is that if you're looking for 
for these changes in your skin, but you're apprehensive about using collagen supplements. I think it's more important to have a really good skincare routine that you will sustain for a long time, that you know have these proven benefits before jumping into something that you're not very confident about. There is way more evidence that supports the use of good SPF, good consistent skincare routine, maybe vitamin C, compared to collagen supplements. So start there if you're not sure. So that was my take on using collagen supplements, looking at the science and data. I'll link a recent video looking at the data and science for LED lights and if it helps with your acne. Thanks for watching.